Hello, this is Bruce Mao. Thank you for the invitation. I'm thrilled to be part of this program, even though I was not able to be with you in person. I want to address today resilience and design. In some ways, design seems to be at odds with resilience. Design is classically about control. Resilience, on the other hand, is about elasticity. Design is thought of as singular, as authorship. Resilience is complex and plural. Typically, design is a monoculture. Resilience is defined as a diverse ecology. It begs the question, how do we imagine designing resilience? Is it even possible? The traditional approach to design has been to create a one-to-one -one relationship between problem and solution, cutting the problem off from its context and locking a solution onto the problem. The mantra in design for half a century has been to tighten the brief, focus the challenge, define the problem and target the design solution. The shorter and tighter the design brief, the better. This thinking came from the Fordist strategy that dominated our imagination for the last hundred years, optimization, cutting things into pieces and optimizing each piece. It is a staggeringly efficient and effective model out of context. It relies on an exterior to the problem. But today we realize there is no exterior to our ecology. There is only one ecology and we're all in it. Everything is in context. There is no Enron off-book accounting when it comes to the environment. There are no externalities. Everything counts. This demands an entirely new approach to design, a way of thinking about and understanding the problem in the most complex way, expanding the brief to think about the implications of our solutions, both upstream and downstream. It means designing systems, not objects. It is a new ethics of design. We call it massive change. When we launched massive change, we established a new school to do it called the Institute Without Boundaries. Together, we did 20 person years of research to understand what is happening in design. But by design, I don't mean the monoculture of fancy, expensive objects of singular authorship. Instead, we disconnected design from the visual, from its formal straitjacket, and liberated the idea of design to be applied to the way that we live and work. We defined design as leadership, our ability to envision a future and systematically work to execute and realize the vision. That ability to visualize a future condition and organize, inspire, and galvanize people to go there is the first, most important potential of design. We focused our research on what we call design economies, the reasons of our lives that are being transformed and in some cases invented by radically expanding design capacities. We documented the economy of the image, where we have colonized the entire electromagnetic spectrum in order to look into the universe and make better decisions about our future. We looked at the urban economy to understand our global commitment to providing shelter for an ever-expanding population and the need for designing complex urban systems. We researched the market economy. This is perhaps where we find the most urgent requirement for resilient design and the strategies of massive change. Markets are not natural spaces. They are design spaces. And how we design them determines what has value and what gets exchanged there. When the design of the market, what we call regulation, is turned off and becomes brittle, while innovation in the market races ahead, we can predict disaster. We need methods of innovative, resilient market design to keep pace with the creative voluptuousness of the market innovators. Finally, we explored the living economy, the design of life itself. When Crick, Franklin, Watson, and Wilkins unlocked the structure of DNA and handed us a system of information they handed us a system of design, and we are hard at it. We are designing life. We have been designing life for thousands of years. 
If you think labradoodles are natural, and tomatoes have always been red, and strawberries are naturally the size of apples, you don't understand our capacity to design living things. We design life. Now we need to design resilient living systems. We need to push the complexity of the challenge and expand the brief for living design by orders of magnitude. I know what you're thinking. This is hubris. This guy just wants to control everything. He's a megalomaniac. But that is the old idea of design. In the new way of thinking, design is not about singular objects. It's about systems. It's not fancy and expensive. Its aim is the highest efficiency of resources. It's not about individual authorship. It's about our collective responsibility. Take the idea of designing nature. At first you say that's not possible, too complex, can't predict the outcomes, can't fully understand the system, we shouldn't have been, even been doing that. All true to some degree, a perfectly sensible position if there were less than a billion people on the planet, as there has been for most of our history. However, with seven billion people, welcoming more than a million more every week, we have collectively decided to design nature. Look around the world today and you will see that where we fail to design the ecologies that sustain us, we design to fail. It is critically urgent that we understand the power we have to design natural systems and develop our best designers to design our ecologies and economies for resilience. Think for a moment how often it happens that you are able to close your eyes and open them in a place where you only see natural things. Rarely. And often when it does happen, we have designed that place to create the experience of nature. In our research for massive change, we discovered a transformation that connects directly to the issue of resilience. We discovered that design has changed its place in the order of things. What has transpired over the last 150 years or so is a radical expansion of our ability to understand the world and build tools that amplify our capacity for shaping it. We can see today that we have a new world. Massive change is not about the world of design, it's about the design of the world. In this new world, design is the ability to envision and produce desired outcomes. Design has radically changed its scale of operation. If we look at this diagram on the left, we see the natural order of things, the way that we imagine things to be. Design is really a subset of business, business, a category within culture, culture an envelope within a natural context. But we know now that business is design, that culture is a design project, and even life itself has now fallen to the capacity of design. To meet those challenges, we will need to redesign design, reimagine design education, develop new ways to put the tools of design into the hands of as many people as possible at the lowest possible cost. That is our objective with the Massive Change Network. By building a network rather than a campus, we begin with a resilient idea. Then we will need to allow greatest access at the greatest speed for the lowest cost. That is why we're developing programs like 24 Hours to Massive Change. These are the 24 key concepts you will need to design massive change. The same ideas you'll need to design resilient systems. Let me end by introducing a few of these principles of design. We are not separate from or above nature. The idea that nature was given to us and belongs to us and that we are somehow above and in charge is a fiction from the age of ignorance and superstition. New wicked problems demand new wicked teams. We will not succeed by respecting the boundaries of the past and our academic disciplines. We need to collaborate across boundaries of all sorts to create the great wealth and abundance and sustainable life of the 21st century. Always search for the worst. 
Designers see the world upside down. If it's bad, for a designer, it's good. If it's terrible, it's awesome. Designing massive change does not conform to the classical models of design. It cannot be accomplished with a seven-step, step-by-step approach. It takes more than brainstorming. It takes a field methodology of design strategies informed by the best science, synthesizing the best art to create something new, resilient design. In the end, it takes what design is all about, leadership. Thank you.